Again, we will complete our lecture. I am Dr. Shifot Fishwich. We will complete the second part. It is about the fetal head. And to know the position of the fetal head in the abdomen, we should know many terms. The first term is attitude. Attitude, it means that relation of the fetal part to each other. And the baby is in attitude of complete flexion. It means that every joint in the baby is flexed. Attitude is the relation of the fetal part to each other. And the attitude of the baby is in complete flexion. So every joint in the baby is flexed. So look here, do the knee, the knee is flexed, hip flexed, ankle flexed, spine flexed, uh, elbow, knee, elbow, and shoulder are flexed, even the head is flexed to the trunk. Complete flexion. Light means that the relation of the longitudinal axis of the baby to the longitudinal axis of the uterus. Longitudinal axis of the baby to the longitudinal axis of the uterus. We have to lie. Either longitudinal lie, it means that the longitudinal axis of the baby is parallel to the longitudinal axis of the uterus, or we have transversal lie, it means that the longitudinal axis of the baby is cutting the longitudinal axis of the uterus. And we have what is called the presentation. If we have longitudinal lie, we have two presentation. If it is longitudinal lie, but the lower part of the baby is fetal head, so the fetal head is touching the pelvic inlet, we have cephalic presentation. If we have longitudinal lie, but the first, the lowest part of the baby is the fetal buttock, the first part of the baby which is touching the pelvic inlet, it is the lower part of the baby, we have what is called the bridge presentation. If we have transverse lie, we have what is called shoulder presentation. So we have two lines, longitudinal and transverse. And the lie, the two longitudinal lie, we have two, present, two presentation. Uh, cephalic presentation and bridge presentation. Cephalic presentation because it's the lower part of the baby. It is the first part of the baby which is touching the pelvic inlet. We have cephalic and we have bridge presentation. And the shoulder presentation is the lower part of the baby which is touching the pelvic cavity of the pelvic inlet. In transverse light, it will be shoulder presentation. We have also a position. A position, it means that the relation of this the presenting part to the female pelvis. Again, relation of the presenting part to the female pelvis. If we have here, if we have here breach presentation, what is the relation of the buttock to the female pelvis? So we must identify the buttock by what is called demonitor. Demonitor it is a part on the presenting part which we define the position. So if we have breach presentation. The monitor will be the sacrum. The demonitor will be the sacrum. So what is the relation of the sacrum to the female pelvis? The sacrum here is directed posterior. So we have sacro posterior position. Again, the, the, the lie here is longitudinal. So the position here is breach position. The presentation here is breach presentation. Again, the lie is longitudinal. And the presentation is breach presentation. So we will define the bridge presentation by the monitor. The monitor of bridge presentation will be the sacrum. The relation of the sacrum to the female pelvis here, the sacrum is directed posterior. So we have direct sacro posterior position. Direct sacro posterior position. If the sacrum is directed anterior to the symphysis pubis, we have sacro anterior position. If the sacrum is directed to the lateral here, we have right sacro transverse position and the left sacro transverse position. But sometimes, like here, it is, will not be directed. Look here. If we look here to the female pelvis here, if the sacrum is directed to the sacral promontory, the sacrum of the baby is a real sacrum, it will be a sacro posterior position. But if the sacrum is here, if the sacrum is here, we have what is called left sacro posterior. The sacrum is here. We have left sacro transverse. If the sacrum is directed here, we have left sacro anterior. If the sacrum here, right sacro anterior, right sacro transverse, right sacro posterior, right sacro posterior. Okay, okay. But the feet position of the fetal head is different. Because according to the degree of flexion of fetal head to the trunk, we can identify the position of the fetal head. The fetal head may be like this, completely flexed to the trunk. Or maybe the fetal head like this, completely extended. 
If the fetal head is completely flexed like this, we have what's called the vertex position. Vertex position. Vertex is the center of the fold of the skull. Here, we have here what's called the vertex position. But if the fetal head extended like this, we have what's called the face presentation because the baby is going down by his face. So we have vertex position, vertex position. Again, because the baby will descend by the uh, vertex, which is the highest part of the fetal head, the center of the fold of the skull. Or maybe the fetal head extended, we have what's called phase position. Or maybe not extended, not flexed, so it's going down by the prow, so we have prow position. So, again, we have two lie, longitudinal transverse, we have three presentation, which is vertex or cephalic presentation, breech presentation, or shoulder presentation, and also we have in cephalic presentation we have three positions according to the degree of flexion of fetal head to the trunk. If the fetal head is completely flexed, we have vertex position. If the fetal head extended, we have face position. If the fetal head is not flexed, not extended, we have prior position. Look here, completely flexed, not flexed, not extended, completely extended. Completely flexed, it is vertex, so it's going by the vertical point, the vertex, which is the center of the fold. If completely extended, we have face, so it's going down by its face. If not flexed, not extended, it's going down by what's called prayer. As I told you, the monitor of the breach presentation is a sacrum. The monitor of the uh, vertex position is the occipital bone because it is the bone which is the lowest part of the vertex position it is the bone which can be touched during the BVE examination so the monitor here will be the occipital bone the monitor here in the face position will be the mentum because it is the bone which can be filled during the BVE examination is the mentum the monitor in brow position will be the frontal bone because it is the part which can be filled during the BVE examination of course, the monitor in shoulder presentation is variable. It may be the scapula, maybe the acrimon, but or maybe the dorsum, but it is always we told it to be scapula. So we have again two lie, longitudinal lie, and transverse lie. Three pos three presentation, cephalic presentation, breech presentation, shoulder presentation. And the position we have three fetal position. Either the fetal head completely flexed, we have vertex position, completely extended, we have face position, not flexed, not extended, we have prior position. And the edge presentation or position has a monitor. The monitor in buttock, in breech presentation, is a sacrum. The monitor in shoulder presentation is the scapula mostly. And the monitor on the uh, cephalic presentation is according to the fetal head position. If the fetal head position is flexed, the vertex position, the monitor will be the occipital bone. If it is completely extended, the face position, the monitor will be the mentum. If not flexed, not extended, prior position, the monitor will be the frontal bone. And about the monitor, we know the position of the fetal head. It is the relation of the monitor to the female pelvis. Okay, look here again. If we have here the fetal head like this, the fetal head like this, the fetal head here is extended. Where is the mentum? The mentum is here. It's directed to huh, the to uh, the fetal head is directed to the left side of the pelvis. So we have left directed transverse, left mento transverse. It's called left mento transverse. Look here, it is brow, right? It is brow. Where is the frontal bone? The frontal bone is directed to also to the left. So we have left frontal transverse. Okay, so look to the pelvis here. If the fetal head is going in flexion, so we have cephalic presentation, vertex position, that the monitor will be occipital bone. If the occipital bone is directed towards the sacrum, it means that the peak of the baby is directed to the sacrum. We have what is called direct occipital posterior. But if the fetal head 
or the occipital bone is directed to here to the sacroiliac joint. We have what is called left occipital posterior. Here will be left occipital transverse. Here will be left occipital anterior. Direct occipital. Here will be direct occipital anterior. Direct occipital. Uh, right occipital anterior. Direct occipital transverse. Again, okay, okay, I missed it. Again, we have here direct occipital posterior. Here will be left occipital posterior. Left occipital transverse, left occipital anterior, direct occipital anterior, right occipital anterior, right occipital transverse, right occipital posterior, and again direct occipital posterior. So we have eight position in vertex position. So if the baby going by the vertex, we have eight position. If going to the mentum, if the mentum is directed to the occiput, we have direct mentum posterior. If directed here, it will be left mento posterior, left mento transverse, left mento anterior, uh, direct mento anterior, right mento anterior, right mento transverse, right mento posterior, and again reach it to be direct mento posterior. So we have a position in the mental and also in the frontal, which is a pro present real position we have also it position and it will be called by the frontal it may be right frontal anterior like this here right frontal anterior and so on so so we have to lie we have three presentation and from this representation we have three position of the fetal head each position of the fetal head have eight variability so if the if the fetal head is going by Cephalic presentation, we have 24 position because we have 8 position if it is vertex, 8 position if it is face, 8 position if it is, if it is prayer. Of course, we have also 8 position in if it is preach presentation, 8 position if it is shoulder presentation. Okay, I will test you. If I told you the fetal head or if the baby is going up to be. Left sacro posterior. What it's meant? What what we mean by that? If it is left sacro posterior, it means that the fetal the baby is going by longitudinal line. Preach presentation, and the sacrum is directed to the left posterior. The sacrum would be here. If I told you the fetal head is going to be right frontal anterior, right frontal anterior. It means that it's longitudinal lie, cephalic presentation, and brow position, and the position of the brow will be here. So by one term, I can identify the lie, the presentation, and the position. If I told you it is going to be direct, direct scapulo, direct scapulo trans, direct scapulo posterior, it means that it is transverse position, it is transverse lie, it is shoulder presentation and the scapula is directed towards the sacrum if i told you it is left occipital transverse it means that longitudinal lie cephalic presentation vertex position and the occiput is directed to the left ear okay okay if we discuss about the anatomy of the fetal head the fetal head is formed of three major parts base of the skull facial bone and the fault of the skull base of the skull has no obstetric importance facial bone has a little obstetric importance and the fault of the skull is the most important the fault of the skull is formed of many bone one occipital bone two parietal bone two frontal bone and two temporal bone at the side here two, two temporal bone so we have two frontal two parietal Two occipital, uh, one occipital and two temporal. How many bones? It is seven bones. Two frontal, two parietal, two temporal at the side, and one occipital. The junction between the bone we have the suture. Meeting of the bone will form the suture. Meeting of the two frontal bone will form frontal suture. 
meeting of the two parietal bone, we have the sagittal suture. Meeting of the two frontal with the two parietal, we have what's called the coronal suture. Meeting of the two parietal with the occipital, we have what's called lamboid suture. And the meeting of the parietal with the temporal, the temporal bone, we have what's called temporoparietal suture. How many suture? Again, sagittal, frontal, coronal, lamboid, and temporoparietal. It is six suture because we have temporoparietal here and temporoparietal in the other side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and five and six to the other side. Meeting of the suture will form the fontanelle. Meeting of the frontal suture with the coronal suture with the sagittal suture, we have the anterior fontanelle. And the meeting of the sagittal suture with the lumboid suture, we have the posterior fontanelle. Meeting of the meeting of the coronal suture with the anterior end of the temporal parietal suture, we have what is called the anterior temporal fontanelle. And the meeting of the lumboid suture with the posterior end of the temporal parietal suture, we have the posterior uh, temporal fontanelle. So how many fontanelle? It is six also. Anterior fontanel, posterior fontanel, anterior temporal fontanel, and posterior temporal fontanel, one the south side and one the other side. Of course, the anterior fontanel is important. Okay, okay, there is an important point to know. We have the center of the sagittal suture here, it is called the vertical point at the center of the sagittal suture. It is midway between the anterior fontanelle and the posterior fontanelle. It is the higher part of the body. It is called the uh, it is called the uh, vertical point. The center of the anterior fontanelle is called the pragmatic point, and the anterior end of the anterior fontanelle is called the anterior the anterior end of the anterior fontanelle. It is called the frontal point. So we have here the vertical point. We have here the vertical point, we have here the pragmatic point, which is the center of the anterior fontanelle, and we have here the frontal point with the anterior part of the anterior fontanelle. So vertical, pragmatic, and frontal point. What is the diameter of the fetal head? Look here again. This is the vertical point so if the baby is in flexion we have the vertex position because this is the lowest part of the baby if the baby in not flexion not flexion not flexion not extension we have the preo position and the face position here if the baby is extended what is the diameter what is the transverse diameter of the fetal head we have what is called the transverse diameter of the fetal head by parietal diameter from one parietal eminence to the other parietal eminence, it is 2.5 cm. It is called by parietal diameter. Subparietal, supraparietal from above one parietal eminence to the lower of the other parietal eminence is called supraparietal, supraparietal diameter. It is about 9 cm. So we have by parietal 9.5 cm and subparietal, supraparietal, it is 9 cm. It is half centimeter less than the by parietal diameter. And another diameter, which is called the bitemporal diameter, from the anterior end of the uh, temporoparietal suture to the anterior end of the other temporoparietal suture, it is about 8 cm. This diameter is very important during occipital posterior position, and you will tell and I will tell you about its importance later. The last diameter is the the last diameter is the pi mastoid diameter from the anterior end of the mastoid process to the other mastoid process is 7.5 cm because it is the lowest diameter which can the fetal head can be reduced during crushing of the fetal head during destructive operation of the baby. So we can reduce the fetal head lesser than 7.5 cm lesser than the pi mastoid diameter. So we have pi parietal which is 9.5 Subparietal, supraparietal, 9 cm, bitemporal, which is 8 cm, and the bimostoid, which is 7.5. This is a transverse diameter. What about the longitudinal diameter? The longitudinal diameter according to the degree of flexion of fetal head to the body. If the fetal head is completely flexed, like this, 
we have what's called suboccipital pragmatic diameter from the suboccipital point, which is a junction between the occipital bone and the neck here, to the pragmatic point, which is the center of the anterior fundament, it is 9.5 centimeter. If the fetal head is extended like this, we have submentopragmatic from the junction of the mentum on the neck to the pragmatic point, which is the center of the anterior fundament, it is 9.5 centimeter. So, if it is completely flexed, we have suboccipital pragmatic 9.5. If it is completely extended, it is submento pragmatic 9.5 cm. Not flexed, not extended, we have what is called mento vertical diameter. From the mentum to the vertical point, which is 13.5 cm. From the mentum to the vertex, it is 13.5, it is very large diameter. So, the prow position, when the head not flexed, not extended, can be delivered to normal because it is larger than any diameter in the body. But if it is vertex position, but it is in occipital posterior position, so the baby head not completely flexed. So we have what is called occipital frontal diameter. Occipital from the occipital to the frontal, and this 12.5 centimeter, also it is very large diameter. So we have transverse diameter, which is constant in each position in the fetal head which is constant in each position. This is similar in each position, which is biparietal 9.5, subparietal, superparietal 9 cm, bitemporal 8 cm, and bimostoid 7.5 cm. But the longitudinal diameter, which is different according to the degree of flexion of fetal head, it may be suboccipital pragmatic completely flexed, or submento vertical when completely extended 9.5 cm, not flexed, not extended, will be mento vertical diameter. This is picture showing the engagement means that the degree of the fetal head is seen through the pelvic inlet. Okay, this is the flexion. And the engagement, we can know the station of the engagement according to the relation of the fetal head to the ischial spine. If the fetal head is the region or the level of the ischial spine, it will be zero station position. If the fetal head about one centimeter above the level of the ischial spine, it will be minus one position. With the fetal head Two centimeter above the level of ischial spine minus two. If it is one centimeter below the level of ischial spine, it is will be plus one. If it is two centimeter below the level of ischial spine, it will be plus two. So if I told you, if the fetal head position is plus two position, it means that it is two centimeter below the level of ischial spine. If I told you the fetal head is zero position, it means that the fetal head at the level of ischial spine. If it is minus three position, it means that the fetal head is about three centimeter above the level of ischial spine. This is the engagement. Okay, what is called molding? Molding it means that we can get benefit from the suture. Look here to the sagittal suture here. If one sagittal suture, if the fetal head by nine point five centimeter, and the pelvic inlet is nine centimeter. So we need to reduce the size of the fetal head. So we know we the fetal head will do what's called molding. It means that one sagittal bone will overlap over the other sagittal bone. So occluding the sagittal suture. So the one uh, parietal bone will go over the other parietal bone, occluding the sagittal suture. So decreasing the transverse diameter of the fetal head. And also the two parietal bone will move over through the two frontal bone, including the coronal suture, so decreasing the transverse diameter of the fetal head, and also maybe moving over also the two, the two parietal bone, will move over the, the occipital bone, including the lumboid suture, so decreasing the transverse diameter of the fetal head. So we are decreasing the transverse diameter of the fetal head by moving the two parietal bone over each other and the longitudinal diameter of the fetal head by moving the two parietal bone over the occipital bone or moving the two parietal bone over the frontal bone. Of course, it is very beneficial decreasing the size of the fetal head, but it must be gradual because if it is care sudden, it will cut or shear the brain sinus, making intracranial hemorrhage of the baby. Or it is very severe also, if severe molting also, it will shear the uh, cranial sinuses and also producing intracranial hemorrhage of the baby. And of course, there is what is called the caput succedinium. The caput, it is due to, the caput like this, it is due to, it is due to long compression of the fetal head 
opposite to the female pelvis. This long compression will occlude the venous return at this area, so this area will be edematous. Um, yeah, it is nothing, it is not uh, dangerous, but it has a medical legal importance because it means that the baby was viable during delivery. Because this edema will not be formed except if the baby is viable. Also, also it marks the position because it will be on the lowest part of the body. Here, if the caput, like here, over the parietal bone, over the sagittal uh, suture, it means that the fetal position here was vertex position. Last thing we will take about is the asyncretism or syncretism. We spoke about we spoke about the degree of flexion of fetal head according to the trunk. But what about flexion of the fetal head over one shoulder? It is a lateral flexion because the fetal head may be flexed over one shoulder or the other. Normally, it must be the fetal head not flexed over shoulders. It means that the sagittal suture will be midway between the symphysis pubis and the sacrum promontory. So the baby will descend synclitic. It means that symmetry. It means that the sagittal suture in the midline. But if the fetal head is flexed on the anterior shoulder like that, we have what is called anterior asyncletism because the uh, sagittal suture will be nearer to the symphysis pubis than to the sacrum. So the posterior parietal bone will be lower than the anterior parietal bone like this. So we have anterior syncletism or what is called the posterior parietal presentation. But if the fetal head is flexed over the posterior shoulder, it means that the sagittal suture will be near to the sacral promontory than to the symphysis pubis. So the anterior parietal bone will be lower than the posterior parietal bone. We have anterior parietal presentation or posterior syncletism. So we have here syncletic head, symmetrical, and these two are asyncletic head. The asyncletic head either anterior asyncletism, flexion over the anterior shoulder, or posterior asyncletism, flexion over the posterior shoulder. In the anterior asyncletism flexion over the anterior shoulder, the posterior parietal bone will be lower than the anterior parietal bone, so it will be called also posterior parietal presentation. So it is anterior asyncletism, posterior parietal presentation. And here in the posterior asyncletism, the fetal head is flexed over the posterior shoulder, so they have the anterior parietal bone lower than the posterior parietal bone, so it is posterior asyncletism or anterior parietal presentation. The asyncletism bring a smaller diameter, smaller transverse diameter, which is subparietal, supraparietal diameter, which is 9 cm. So also if the fetal or, or the pelvic inlet is narrow, so the fetal head will do asyncletism. So bringing a smaller diameter, which is 9 cm, subparietal, supraparietal diameter, so the fetal head can pass. But after passing, the fetal head must adjust himself, must adjust himself. Okay, must adjust himself because if not adjust himself, the, the labor will be obstructed. And it is easier to adjust himself along the sacral promontory, not to the symphysis pubis, because in the posterior asyncretism, when adjust himself, will adjust himself against the sacral promontory, which is a ridge of bone, while in anterior asyncretism, will adjust himself against the symphysis pubis, which is long bone, it is about one half centimeter. So the posterior asyncretism, it is easier to correct itself, why the anterior asyncretism it is much harder. The posterior asyncretism is more common in multigravida, while anterior asyncretism is more common in primary gravida. So, if we have contracted pelvis, the pelvic inlet is 9 cm, vibrital is 9.5, so the first mechanism of the baby is doing asyncretism. If it is primary, it mostly will be anterior asyncretism, if it is multi, it mostly will be posterior asyncretism. Again, okay, so by doing a syncretism, bringing a smaller diameter, which is supraparietal, subparietal diameter, which is 9 cm. If this mechanism not succeeded, it will do another mechanism, which is molding by moving the parietal bone over each other, or the parietal bone over the frontal or over the occipital bone. This is a syncretism. Okay, thank you, and uh, take care of yourself. Stay safe. God bless you. Thank you.